Welcome to this Age of Empires forecasted game and today spawning in the northeast corner of the map we've got 3D Cat playing in blue as the Abbasid Dynasty. And his opponent today will be Baldur's Gate 3 Enjoyer playing in green as the Mongols. Now this is actually Vortex for those who don't know, one of the uh, very finest players in Age of Empires 4, a very aggressive player in Age of Empires 4 and so the reason why I'm super excited about this matchup because the Mongols are known as a super aggressive civilization. And when you've got Vortex playing them, well, you can expect some aggression, that is for sure. And so I suspect things are going to heat up very quickly. And now, when you couple in as well the fact that this map is the pit, well, the Mongols do so well on this map. We've talked about it before on this channel how strong that the Mongols can be, especially when they have their initial aggression and also on the back of that, end up trading. Going up against the Abbasid Dynasty though, they do have a couple of tricks up their sleeves. Uh, there have often been a very much one trick kind of st strategy, one trick kind of play with their economy wing and going into, um, you know, the uh, fresh foodstuffs technology, getting the cheaper villages, cheaper town centers, and then getting multiple of those playing the economy approach. But to be able to address the concerns that the Mongols will give them, military wing is a potential option. And uh, it's an interesting situation in Age of Empires 4 right now, how the civilizations are playing out and Often with RTS games, you have one dominant Civ in the matchup, and the other Civ has to kind of adapt and approach the game in a certain way to deal with that. And I think in many ways, the Mongols are a civilization which tend to force their opponents into certain things, certain reactions, and it becomes, you know, a bit claustrophobic playing against the Mongols. And it's often because of their tempo aggression, their ability to produce units to dictate the tempo of the game. As we can see already, a villager going forward, maybe to get an outpost rush, two spearmen popping out, double production for the Uvu. So this is the initial aggression. This is the initial dictation of terms of the fight, terms of the game. Um, now, there are two ways that the Abbasid Dynasty could deal with this. They could either go for a military wing upgrade, uh, as we see actually now has been queued up. So it will be the military wing for 3D Cat, and that will actually spawn him some free units, which will help him deal with the uh, the on incoming uh, outpost rush. Now, the outpost rush is, it, it does feel a little bit late. Um, it's 2 minutes 40 seconds. I, I think a lot of it comes down to how far away the players are from each other on the pit and yeah I mean I think you had a bit of idle time with the villager going around in an awkward spot having to wait for the spearmen as well so it's, it's not like overly delayed but three minutes on the clock already the Abbasid dynasty already teching up to the next stage so um yeah I mean it's, it's a tricky situation for the Mongols I'm not sure how well this is going to work out for him there is a minute still left to go to the age up though Abbasid dynasty obviously can't actually speed up the age up and so he's stuck at the minute timer it will need to wait for that, that time for the units to pop out um, so this is certainly one way to deal with the outpost rush coming in. The other way would have been to go for a normal economy wing and, and look to get a lot of wood to be able to drop down an archery range and produce units the traditional way. But he will get some free units here, which will be quite nice. And this does unlock a lot of potential for the Abbasid Dynasty. They can go for boot camp, which will increase the health of all the infantry by 15%. That's in the feudal age. And then they can go for a crazy upgrade, the composite bows, which actually increases the attack speed of archers by 33% actually bonkers when you think about it because you know the comparative for other civilizations things like network of castles for the english increases the attack speed by 20 percent um the tower of victory i believe is 20 percent as well and so 33 percent on those archers is a little bit disgusting but it is obviously specific just to archers and so I, you know we can expect that the ambassador dynasty will go for archers quite heavily now on the back of this with the spearmen getting some gold will he actually get bounty that's the question as you see two archers two spearmen popping out already I might lose a bit of health on the uh, outpost fire though does he lose one archer there or just about gets away from it uh but it does reduce the the onward progression of the outpost he should probably end up getting the bounty from this unless the village gets pulled to repair um we'll, we'll have to see yeah i think he gets a bounty i think torches are coming out from the spearmen and they'll deal with that now on the back end of this we'll have to see what vortex decides to do in terms of age up whether it's going to be the silver tree or is it going to be deer stones Trade is certainly a distinct possibility, getting a market here or the silver tree. Trade to the opposite uh, neutral trade post. Uh, has to be said though, against the Abbasid Dynasty and the military wing, it, it's a nice way to help counter this. So it does get the raiding bounty with the, the mining camp being now on fire. Alright, so it will be a silver tree for the feudal age. Now just to hope to uh, remind you guys if you have been enjoying the content do feel free to give the video a like it really helps me with the algorithm maybe drop a, your favorite emoji in the comment section again it, it helps with the engagement it's super super helpful for me so and it's totally free for you so give it a try see if it helps boost my uh my channel a little bit in any case hopefully 
Um, you know, for Vortex's sake, he's going to want to try and push this back somehow. Now, these three units are actually dishing out a bit of damage because, well, on the back of this, Vortex hasn't actually got production building. Of course, going for the outpost rush has delayed him. Um, I just said that, I mean, it does have a barracks, but the trouble is producing spearmen here, a little bit awkward because, of course, of the two archers. He's going to need he's going to need a different unit, maybe a Keshik or two. Uh, but having two different unit types on the military school is really nice, actually, because if, if it was only spearmen, you know, there's a, there's a world in which that Vortex obviously just produces his own spearmen, double produces them and fights it. Uh, speaking of which, those five spearmen are still stuck at home in the outpost. Well, well I say home, but it's their temporary home, the outpost is, uh, and he's actually in the home of the Abbasid Dynasty right now. Just firing off at that house. This could be an interesting position in this uh, match, being able to defend this spot for the Mongols. I'm not sure if he keeps this uh, this Uvu alive, especially with now that there's a couple more units heading in. Another Spearman. And adding the scout to the mix as well with another archer. So on the back of this is a uh, barracks and an archer. Archer range rather. Constantly producing. I wonder whether he actually got the first upgrade. Boot camp. He hasn't just yet. Hasn't got the gold for it. Khan harassing that woodline. Uh, but I suspect this will be one of the early upgrades that uh, 3D Cat decides to get. Now what I'm interested about this match is because obviously 3D Cat's playing is very aggressive. And I wonder whether it's something that actually goes through the DNA of the 3D clan. You, you, may, you guys may know of uh, 3DB of course. Another very highly aggressive player. Now they are clan members, uh, teammates, if you will. Um, and I, I wonder how long this game is going to last in the feud ledge, because it could go on for a while, with both players looking to be very aggressive. The one thing that's a bit concerning for the Mongols in this situation is that the the trade is an awkward uh, kind of economy boost, because it's not condensed economy, it's very difficult to defend at times. It has to span the whole length of the map, and... With the opponent kind of spreading out their army, their forces, they can pick off some traders here and there. As we see now, the Ubu going down did manage to save those production buildings there, Vortex. A barracks in the archery range. But with this early aggression coming in from the Bastard Dynasty and 3D Cat, it gives him a lot of map positioning. Um, and now with this, it means that his economy is completely safe and secure, at least for now, because of the military on the front lines. There comes a point where 3D Cat might actually look to try and wall up, trying to narrow the, the, the points of her attack. Uh, but that would use a lot of precious wood. Uh, wood. Wood which could be used for military units. So we'll see, we'll, we'll see his strategy, how he decides to plan this one out. He's also going for a stable. Um, and uh, we'll be pumping out those units. You can see how focused he is on military units rather than upgrades at this point. And uh, no fresh food stuffs just yet. Uh, the upgrade that actually uh, reduces the cost of villagers by 35% has actually gone for boot camp. And so those infantry will be a little bit more tanky. We'll probably wants to keep hold of this up, uh, this uh, this house if we can. We'll be sending a villager to repair. Uh, it does have a decent number of spin, but they are getting picked apart by the outpost. The outpost doing some good work here. Buy some time for the Mongols, gives them some time to breathe. Now he's going to get his silver tree in position, going to start up that trade. Um, something else to consider is that the trade does get some time, does take some time rather, to really start building up um, some economy for the Mongols. But once it does get rolling, it's pretty, pretty devastating if you can't stop it. That is, of course, something that 3D Cat will want to look to do to try and stop that push. And uh, uh, with the traders, that is. I mean, we shall see if he manages to do that. Really starting to mass up with double archery range uh, coming on the way very soon. Does have a stable here, getting those Keshiks, double producing them. You can see already kind of starting to build up the uh, defences, the outposts, to uh, take advantage of the YAM network if he does actually... Yeah, there we are. Yeah, it's going to be increasing the speed of those traders and also offer a lot of protection. A lot of units down the middle. Now, we can actually see the Palisade Wall templates already coming up there for 3D Cat. They certainly look to narrow the approach and narrow the, narrow the angle of attack. A large number of military forces, 23 to 13... And I think 3D Cat is probably looking to push on a little bit here. It's actually quite satisfying to see the Mongols being pegged back. This is something that you don't often see. Usually it's very much the Mongols that are pressuring, causing a lot of havoc, you know, getting map control. But the Bastard Dynasty military wing is actually really strong, it seems, against the Mongols. Granted, though, that the Mongols haven't been super aggressive. Um, you know, they're gone for trade, ultimately. And with Bastard Dynasty staying 1 TC... It's something that is very different for the Abbasid Dynasty. So a nice new way that we're watching the Abbasid Dynasty play. It's something that I feel I've always 
it's always been a possibility with the civilization because they have you know siege engineering for free the upgrade from the blacksmith that enables them to produce rams so they've always had a bit of aggression in their streak but i think the recent buffing of the military wing giving them those free units has really added a new dimension to the the Abbasid dynasty a new way of playing and I, I like how that has changed things in age of empires 4 you know it's really gotten rid of the linear approach to the civilizations you know the civilizations already have really one way to play and having that flexibility is so so important for a competitive rts scene like age of empires 4 keeps things fresh keeps things active keeps things interesting and that is what we like to see in age of empires 4. a lot of horsemen uh i say a lot four of them with a the scout i can just uh, check out that trader he, he's aware i believe now he's aware of the trade look to just try and snipe out a couple of traders if he can and uh, well vortex is wise to the ruse is sending his keshex and uh, infantry there now he does have arrow slits, so it's going to cause a bit of damage. Not all that much. There's no. Oh, he actually takes out a horseman. <laughs> nice sniper. Uh, got to back off. He's looking to try and take out the scout to reduce the vision. I think palisade walls are pretty much now all up and running for the Bastard Dynasty. So his economy is going to be very safe. And this is something to think about in the dynamics of this match. The villagers for Baldur's Gate 3, Enjoyer, Vortex. They're going to be exposed at times. There's no passive. Um, you know, there's no static defenses, rather. No walls protect them. The Abbasid Dynasty is actually looking very safe and secure behind those walls. At this point, it's going to be the Abbasid Dynasty 3D Cat's opportunity to actually do some eco damage. He's already got one villager and uh, if he continues to do that damage, it'll be very painful for the Mongols because there's a lot of investment in these units. He's going to take out two traders and all of a sudden, it's the Abbasid Dynasty that are in the, uh, the driver's seat here. They have more economy units. They've got more military by quite a large amount. He's going to try and take down the production buildings. If he takes out the Ubu, it's a big significant... Um, Kind of damage that the mongols will be taking the ability to double produce a couple of keshiks though picking off reinforcements a nice little counter attack there for vortex does have a spearman a couple of horsemen popping out as well production is coming out from the defenders advantage garrisons the villages in the town center keshiks on the retreat now back at where it really matters the stable is still up and running uh Ovu took a lot of damage but same with the economy units holy moly quite a few traders going down not enough military here for vortex it seems now, boot camp is coming into play when you think about it. That is a significant difference between these two players. Not only the, that, but also Iron Undermesh coming in clutch. And also Steeled Arrow for 3D Cat. So these archers are going to be really strong. They've got boot camp and also the Blacksmith upgrades to boot. Quite a few economy units gone down already. Heavy investments being lost there for the Mongols before they've really paid themselves off. Spearmen are in position to take care of the Keshiks. Looks like the archers are dealing out a lot of damage for the Abbasid Dynasty. Quite a few archers still alive for the Mongols. I, I wonder whether the Abbasid Dynasty get cleared up here. It's a good cleanup for Mongols. He should take this out, Vortex. And that will give them some breathing space. Quite a few units lost, but he did do damage. That is a key difference. He has done damage, which is something that the Abbasid Dynasty kind of had to do, really. Because he obviously he was against a, a trade, and you can't allow a trade to build up too uh, too quickly. Oh, quite a few villagers that are idle there for 3D Cat. He needs to get on to other things, and he does indeed do so. Um... One thing that's a bit different, having a lot of map control for the Abbasid Dynasty, whilst it obviously gives him a lot of breathing space for the villagers to work safely, they unfortunately can't take advantage of. Boar is something that the civilization can't, can't take advantage of. Obviously, you have that Muslim her heritage, and the Islamic faith uh, prohibits taking um, you know, pig meat, boar meat. So that's something that they've considered in the development of the civilization. They can obviously take deer, though. Although, actually, that's a question. I'm not sure, is deer meat permissible for the Muslim faith to, to consume? That's a good question. I'm not entirely sure, actually. I mean, deer is not... I mean, I don't know, actually. That's something to question and, and to ask. If there are any uh, viewers adherent to the Islamic tradition, Islamic faith, it would be uh, good for you guys to let us know, to uh, inform us, to give us a bit of information about whether it is in keeping with the Islamic tradition to be able to have deer meat. Uh, I mean, I, I would assume so, considering the game, but obviously, you know, games are fictitious and whilst they've adhered to the boar issue you know it could quite well be that that the huntable deer are not are not a food source that's permissible within the islamic tradition it's something that i'd love to find out so let me know in the comment section below if it's something that you know about in any case the mongols holy moly they are starting to build up a large number of units as well now with that breathing space and the economy is starting to roll a little bit despite losing six workers they're actually ahead uh, by three not all that many but you know having lost six is quite a significant uh, number 34 military in the middle and now I, I like what the Abbasid Dynasty has done with the the Palisade Walls though I have to say like 
it, it really reduces the movement capability of the Mongols. It's something that actually, when you face up against the Mongols, it's probably one of the most annoying things to deal with. The m multiple attacks that you can get from the Mongols, they come from all the different directions you can imagine, and they just harass your economy. It can be very frustrating to deal with. But on a map like Pit, when you can get this Palisade Wall, static defense is relatively cheap for what they provide. It allows the concentration of the forces for the Bastard Dynasty. You can see the military units pumping out for them. And uh, it's partly because of the eco upgrades. It's got horticulture, it's got double broadaxe already. It's had wheelbarrow for quite some time. And whilst the Mongols have wheelbarrow, they don't have the other two upgrades. The other benefit that comes with this map positioning for the Abbasid Dynasty and the sheer number of units is it, it just forces these villagers idle time and it just reduces the ability for them to take these deer packs. Which is free food at the end of the day. And uh, these units are doing quite well with the boot camp. He is fighting underneath an outpost. I'm not sure how I feel about that for the Abbasid Dynasty. He does have a lot of units though. He's going to take the engagement spears, engage with the Keshiks. The uh, the attack maneuver arrow comes in for the Keshik. Sorry, for the from the, um, the Khan there rather. A large engagement with the spearmen on the front line. Archers on the back line there for 3D Cat with the boot camp. Actually doing a lot of damage. I think this is the fight that 3D Cat wins. Despite finding, fighting underneath the outpost. And, and even if he doesn't win it. Well a lot of Keshiks are going down to the spearmen. I think Keshiks has to back away here. And he might just look to try and focus on the output. No he's going to. The Keshiks are backing into it. I think spearmen numbers are starting to dwindle though for 3D Cat. That is an issue. As I said it's got a decent number. But yeah it's, 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 an, it's an awkward one to read this fight. But the boot camp certainly helping things. Oh, okay, that's a terrible fight for the Keshiks. They absolutely perish now. He's going to lose this outpost with five villagers garrison the side. That's five more casualties. He's lost six already. This is a problem for the Mongols. He's going to want to try and save those villagers, but I don't think he can. The archers catching the Khan. Might take out the Khan. Villagers trying to run away with the wheelbarrow. They will be running pretty fast, but the horsemen will keep up with that and loses another five villagers. 41 military to nine. Vortex is in all sorts of trouble. How does he find a way back into the game? His military number is absolutely rock bottom and doesn't have a huge amounts of economy to fund new units does have a lot of food possibly thinking about going to the car stage that'd be obviously a huge mistake in this situation the numbers start to spiral out of control it's really weird to see the abbasid dynasty being played like this it's still on one town center you often kind of attribute the snowball effect the aggression the sheer aggression to be a uh, you know something specific to the mongols but today 3d cat showing the abbasid dynasty can be incredibly strong and with a lot of villagers on wood, 22 for the Abbasid Dynasty. I just wonder whether some rams might be coming out soon. And certainly focusing down on the outpost. The concern for the Mongols is the trade could be cut off. And that's a large part of the economy. And with 13 worker kills already, 14, make it 15. This is looking bad for the Mongols. It's losing a lot of economy. And it's not just the comparative numbers. Like... When you look at the numbers, 57 workers to 59 doesn't seem all that bad, but there's a lot of investment that went into those 15 workers that are not coming back into the uh, into the fold, into the coffers, into the, the bank accounts of the resources for the Mongols. And here we do see now a ram being built on the field, siege engineering for free, of course, for the, uh, the Abbasid dynasty. And I like to see this is something obviously the pro players do. They have just singular units scouting, getting information, looking to see where they can pick off units where they can. A deer pack unfortunately not been taken. Whereas the Abbasid Dynasty with the map control, map positioning, have taken all of their deer camps. And it's, it's significant. It's free food, free resources that he's managed to uh, to take. And here comes a ram rush. He's going to look to do some damage. Both players still in the feudal age, of course. No signs of going to the castle age, which is something we love to see. You know, full feudal age aggression. Uvu being depleted. It doesn't... I mean, where does he even re relocate that? He doesn't have stone on this map, on the side. There aren't that many stone uh, veins anyway. And the front one is completely out of the question for now. And here comes the rams. Now, these builders can pack up and move, so I would be expecting the Vortex to do just that. But the military number is 68 to 34. Now, this is becoming a slight problem for the Mongols. And it because it's because of the, the worker kills. There's so much damage that's been done. The knights, the Keshiks rather, trying to head for... Oh, can he snipe this actually? The stable? Oh, it's on fire. Can he keep it alive? Villagers have to repair though. He's going to want to. Uh, vortex. Repair, repair, repair. In any case... All damage coming in. Does lose a pasture. Spearman always threatening to be aggressive. I mean, that's... Okay, okay. wait, wait. 23. Oh, actually stops. The damage actually stops when it starts to deploy. But would it be still on fire? I'm really interested in this, actually. Oh, he loses it. He doesn't manage to keep it alive. And that's actually quite significant. It's production building. It's 150 wood investment. And especially when he's under a lot of pressure. Here comes the attack maneuver arrow. Query is, is whether 3D Cat can just pile on the pressure. It does have... Another ram still on the field. Did a lot of damage. 
Look at this, it's starting to really snowball. 74 military is going completely mad with the production. Reducing out of a heck of a lot of production buildings back at home. A lot of untouched economy. I think that's a big that's a big reason why he's winning here in this situation. But Vortex is not out of it just yet. A large number of archers he's got. 31. And uh, the, the, the bigger concern though is that whilst both players have full blacksmith upgrades, well, Vortex doesn't have boot camp. It doesn't have that little bit of a boost that these units for the Abbasid Dynasty have. And it looks like that's something that's really playing uh, playing a big role in this this matchup. There is a way that the Abbasid Dynasty can compound that. If he does go to the Castle Age on the back of this, he could even go for composite arrows, which um, composite bows rather, which actually makes these guys fire 33% faster, which would be absolutely huge. Of course, there's no real signs of that happening just yet, but they're doing a lot of damage to those Keshex. The trouble for the Keshex is they can't really engage in this army composition. The Spearmen are always threatening to attack. There are horsemen acting as meat shield for the Abbasid Dynasty. There the Keshex going forward, but as he does, look at the Spearmen, they get ready to fight. The archers focusing down on the Keshex. Once all the Keshex go down, that is an issue because there are a group of horsemen looking ready to pounce. Outpost being built looks to use some of the static defenses to help in the fight, but the number's not enough here for Baldur's Gate 3 Vortex. He is half of the military almost, and that is not looking good for him. Spearman always threatening, always threatening with those Keshex. It's archers versus archers. I think 3D Count fancies his chances. I don't think he actually has as many archers. 25 to 35, but Boot Camp could be playing a big role here. Villagers coming to try and take care of that ram. I think that ram does go down, but again, it forces the villagers to be idled. 18 worker damage. It looks like 3D Count might be going back home just to breathe a little bit, just to reinforce and regroup. He's done a lot of damage. And he's caused a lot of worker idle time. It would be lovely to see if you could get like a worker efficiency statistic to see how much of these workers have been idled. But with 70 economy to 70 being neck and neck, despite having trading, that's a significant... I mean, it looks even, but it's not because of the investment in the uh, 18 workers that have been killed. Looks like uh, Greedy Cat doesn't want to lay up. He wants to go around on the uh, east side of things now. And maybe sniping out a couple more traders. But here the horsemen on the front lines, the spearmen there backing off, the archers going to focus on each other. I think now this is crazy because 3D Cat actually I think has almost the same amount if not more and uh, the Spearman going to try and chase down the Keshek Stoke. Doesn't really want to fight underneath the town centre though if he can. But the Keshek numbers are starting to dwindle. That is an issue. It could be an opportunity here for 3D Cat just go really straight forward. He's going to go forward with this Horseman and this is looking rough for Vortex. He's going to hold on for now, now though. He can, I mean the one thing you can never really count out for Vortex is the ability to defend. He's certainly defending his position quite nicely but the trade is always at risk. Spearman trying to force away the Keshiks. Keshik numbers aren't necessarily where he wants to be with here, Vortex. But fighting underneath the town centre is certainly helping Vortex's cause. We will lose a trader or two, though. This is looking bad. 20 worker damage. And it looks like this is going to continue to rise. But it's certainly a massive micro fest. 21 archers for the Abbasid Dynasty, 20 for the Mongols, but obviously the Abbasid Dynasty having the edge of the um, boot camp upgrade. But the telling statistic really is the military numbers, 55 to 32. And this will be a very, very good win for 3D Cat. Vortex, certainly one of the best players in Age of Empires 4, was already there in the uh, Red Bull Wallalo tournament, showcasing the very best players in Age of Empires 4. 3D Cat has been a very high ranking player, but not quite to the level of 3D of 3DB, his teammate, not quite to the level of Vortex. But 3D Cat playing out of his skin today, playing incredibly well, showcasing a new Abbasid Dynasty strategy that we haven't seen very much of. You know, often it's very much multiple town centers, an eco approach for the civilization, but going toe to toe with the Mongols, which is really surprising. And, you know, it's quite incredible to see the Mongols being outgunned, outmatched, outclassed by the Abbasid Dynasty, beating them at their own game as well. He's standing and fighting, and he's just confident here, 3D Cat, of taking good fights. The Keshik's always threatening, but so are the Spearmen. Trying to rush out an outpost. I think it's going to be more dead villagers. 22 workers damage. Keeping that work account down for Vortex. Now the good thing for the Mongols is that whilst the trade is very open, uh, the villagers here kind of gathering underneath the town centre is very condensed. Kind of trying to rush up an outpost. He's going to lose a lot of villagers here if he can't maintain this position. I'm not sure he wins this. Vortex might lose his military, but the good thing is using the villagers as kind of a meat shield. It means that, well, I don't know, I don't think this is a good idea actually. He does get the outpost up in the end, but a lot of idle time, a lot of villagers died there. Um or a decent number at least, it does mean that um, it did give 3D Cat a decision to make. Because if he, if he was to focus on the villagers, 
It meant that the army would be free to shoot there for the Mongols without being, you know, counter shot. Um, 3D Cat didn't necessarily focus on too many of those villages. The outpost does go up. It doesn't want to fight underneath that just yet. But what's kind of concerning is the resources. Take a look at the top right. 3D Cat is going to go into the next stage very soon. Going to go for the economic wing. That is not the big deal. The big deal is that he's already got the military wing. And now this is going to access him to composite bows. Increasing the attack speed by 33%. And I'm almost 100% sure he's going to go for it. Considering the number of archers he's got. 37. It'd be absolutely ludicrous if he doesn't go for it. I'm sure he will. It's going to go for rams. And um, uh, this is an interesting state of the game. Because, I mean, they're pretty even on economy. And I, I think I think for 3D Cat, it might be a better option just to backtrack a little bit here. Just to not be too aggressive, not dive too much. And the reason why I say that is because he's got military on the field. He wants to get these units to veterancy. He wants them to become castle age units. He's not going to lay off though. He's going to continue to pile on the pressure. He doesn't obviously want Vortex to go to the castle age himself. I don't know about this. He's invested a lot of resources into that castle age. It means that's less units for him compared to Vortex if they have equal, you know, village counts. And Vortex is continuing to produce those units. So he should have a decent number of units. He's actually starting to build up again. Not quite matching the numbers though. So 3D Cat does have the numbers to be fair. And I guess he's recognized that. A lot of villages idled. It's actually kind of crazy. A large number of Keshik numbers. Uh, but, you know, they've got the Spearman numbers here. The Bastard Dynasty as well. Holy smokes, he's picking off villages on the retreat. This is a nice play. 26 worker damage does lose the ram. And I, the thing is, 300 wood investment for that ram to keep that number of villages idled. I mean, 300 wood is a lot, but getting that number of villages idled, it could be worth it just for that. But the Keshit's going to try and chase down the archers. Almost there to the castle edge. I think 3D Cat just needs to keep these units alive. He doesn't He doesn't need to risk taking a bad fight. Uh, but although he has 38 archers versus 28, so it's not really a bad fight. He's going to back away now. I think now Baldur's Gate, Vortex is going to pounce on this. He needs to be aggressive. He knows his opponents in the castle edge. He cannot afford these units to get to the veterancy without being challenged. And uh, unfortunate for Vortex, I'm not sure he's going to be able to, be able to catch up. But the veterancy is coming in. It's not going to take all that long. Oh, but he stopped. 3D Cat stopped in the middle. That could be a bit of an issue now. He's backing away a little bit. But he lost a little bit of ground there. Kashyyyk's dive in, get a good hit. But the spearmen are there to try and protect. I think 3D Cat should survive a little bit. Pretty nicely. 22 seconds. I mean, once the unit veterancy comes in, he'll be able to push again. This does give the opportunity, though, for Vortex to get up to the next stage himself. Going to go up with a Coral Tie. This could be a big game changer. This is a landmark which actually increases the uh, attack damage by 20% for the units that are within the aura of it and also heals units too. So this could be a, a rescue mechanic almost for the Mongols. We'll have to see. I mean, it is a very good landmark to go, but the trouble is that the, the wing of choice, or at least getting to the castle age, having chosen military wing before gives him the composite bows upgrade and he's already got it in. These guys are going to be great. He's going to get steel dower as well. These units are going to be absolutely strong. They are going to be incredible. And well, the Vortex has lost a lot of economy. 26 worker damage. Let's get to the castle age now. Now it's time for 3D Cat to push. He knows his opponent's gone to the next stage. It's going to take a time for, the, for those veterans upgrades to come in. It's going to take 20... 30 seconds, this one 50 seconds, and so this is a nice window for 3D Cat to push, and he's going to push right into the heart of that town centre. He's fighting with the veteran archers, with composite bows, with boot camp, with steeled arrow, and the banners projectiles upgrade, the secondary upgrade for the attack for the archers, and he's also looking to get that secondary archer armour. Might just come into the uh, into the game right within the fight. A lot of Keshiks though, spearmen aren't in good numbers. He needs a spearman to take care of those Keshiks, there aren't quite enough. Such a good pushback by Vortex. He's pushing this back nicely and he needed to, to be fair. Despite not having the... Oh, they are veteran Keshiks now, so they're looking pretty strong. Veterancy for the archers not quite in there. But he's certainly fighting a mismatch. Man at arms! A really nice option for 3D Cat. That'll deal with a lot of the archers that are there on the field for the Mongols. The Mongols will need to double down on those Keshiks. The, the other option is going for crossbows, but I don't know how I feel about going crossbows in this scenario with the number of archers that are there, that are there for 3D Cat. Also, don't forget these guys, the Ghulam, I say Man of Arms, they are actually the Ghulam. They benefit from boot camp. Taking the fight dead on, 28 worker damage. He's fighting head on, especially underneath the Coral Ties. Bit of an awkward situation there for 3D Cap, but he's trusted his composite bows. Now, the crazy thing is that boot camp composite bows fighting against Coral Tie. That's effectively the difference and the second attack upgrade, to be fair, um, for the archers. Well, this is a bad fight for. For Vortex. I'm not sure he wins this. He's going down to 16 military versus 56. 30 worker damage has been inflicted 
More workers are going down, trying to garrison inside the outpost. Some of them survive, but a lot of their brothers and sisters do not. He's going to just fight underneath these uh, these outposts and the Keshiks. It's kind of crazy how much the damage they're doing to veteran Keshiks. Comes down to the composite bows, I guess. Again, killing more traders. 90 economy units for, for Vortex, despite having the trade. It's just not enough. 3D Cat's economy been completely untouched. 34 worker kills for 3D Cat at this moment. Khan getting involved, but I'm not sure he has enough. A lot of those archers picking away the Keshiks. I mean, the thing is, these guys are armoured units, but they're taking so much damage from these Abbasid Dynasty archers, and I think it's because of composite bows, man at arms, tanking... Well, I say man at arms, but Gulam. The man at arms equivalent for the Abbasid Dynasty, tanking a lot of this, and with 37 worker damage now, versus zero, that is a huge differential. I think he's going to back off for now, 48 military to 23. Vortex just struggling to keep up the military numbers. Going to get a Manganel on the field. That will certainly help deal with those archers from the Mongols. On the west side, just one crossbow. Just keeping an eye on things and just being a bit of a pain. No, but the main action is here with that Manganel. Will they get a good shot? That is the question. I mean, a Manganel shot on this, that would be absolutely devastating. 31 villagers on like a handful of tiles. Heading further forward, going to try and take down the outpost. And, and the strong position where of what 3D Cat is doing, he is cutting off trade, or at least he's harassing trade. That's so significant, rather than just fighting in the middle. Or oh, the Manganel Shock does get off, doesn't hit on those villagers. Villagers coming out to try and snipe the Manganel, he's sacrificing. Does he have textiles? That is the question. Vortex, I hope you have textiles, my dude. He does. He's going to look to take out the Manganel without... It's going to get a lot of casualties. 52 worker damage. Holy smokes, he's down to, to 78 economy. And this is looking uh, pretty dicey here for Vortex. Will this be a huge victory for 3D Cat and the Abbasid Dynasty, beating the Mongols at their own game, maybe? Does have a couple of crossbows as well to deal with the Keshiks. The archers seem to be holding their own as well, in any case. <laughs> 45 minutes to 26, 80 economy to 100. Things are kind of slipping out of the grip for Vortex. He's just not been able to do any worker damage. He's constantly on the defensive. It feel, it must feel very awkward for the Mongols. This is not something that they are used to. That is for sure. His units are healing up though nicely underneath the Coral Dye. We didn't really take much a look at the 3D Cat's base. And it's because you know there's not been any action. He's got a huge amounts of farming transition. Which is quite incredible how he's managed to set all this up. Look at the production building. Oh my god. It's got mass archers. Nine archery rangers. Does he have more on the map? No, it's nine. It's absolutely crazy, though. Only producing from four, to be fair. I mean, if he keeps up the gold income, he might be looking to go to the Imperial Age. Number preservation, getting the eco upgrades, looking to get another Manganel. This time, this could be huge. Actually, this has been a game changer because it's been difficult for Vortex to deal with this. No Springles on the field, had to sacrifice a lot of villagers. 54 worker damage. Let that sink in. 54 to 0. Setting a couple of horsemen looking to snipe again. Some of these traders will pull away some Keshiks. That could be his chance to attack actually. Adding in a ram as well. Spring on placement in that outpost will help the defense. Now the player going for sacred site, which is kind of surprised, uh, especially from 3D Cat's perspective because he does have the map control. Now that could could have been a nice addition, but uh, he obviously is trying to produce as much as he possibly can in terms of units, trying to spend every little penny that he gets in. Is that Monk's going for Siege Engineering? A couple of horsemen looking to try and snipe out Trader. Should actually get this one. Should indeed. Cash is going to get involved now. We're going to back away and try to snipe out the crossbow. Uh, here comes a big push though with the Mongols trying to defend against the uh, Manganel and the Battery Ram. Uh, took a bit of damage there though, that, that um, the manga down there, not ideal. He's engaging heavily. The Rams on the outpost. Manga, oh, shot gets off, takes out a lot of the villagers. 60 worker damage, the Ram going to take it down the outpost. The problem for the Mongols, he can't deal with the Rams. Manganel does go down, but with the archers and the crossbows on the backline, I think the crossbows get boot camp as well, which is absolutely insane. With the Ghulam as well, the military wing looking incredibly strong for the Mongols. 91 military to 46, 83 economy to 100. This is not looking good for Vortex's Mongols. The outposts are going down to the Rams. There's no way to deal with that Ram now. Ram going to continue to push on and cause a lot of damage. Fighting underneath the Coral Tie. Looks like the Coral Tie won't even be enough. Almost reaching 
70 worker damage. Looks like Sacred Sites. Well, relics are being picked up rather for 3D cap on the back of all of this. And this is looking bad for the Mongols. I think he's looking like he's going to retreat here for 3D cap. Doesn't want to dive in too much further forward underneath the town center. I think he feels like he's done a lot of worker damage and he's not wrong. <laughs> that is for sure. 70 worker damage. Still has that ram alive. Might be looking to take down that secondary outpost. Trying to get another outpost here. Vortex. Will he manage it? That is the question. The range units might just focus on the villagers. We'll see. Yeah, I think he just jumps on top of that. Can take the villagers out. Will the outpost go out? Will it even be enough? I'm not sure it will. Villagers go down. The outpost is denied. Traders will be going down next. The ram is firing off on the crawl tie next. There is a mangonel though, though for the Mongols. That could be huge if the mangonel gets some big hot hit, heavy hits on 3D Cat's army, and it does, but that is not enough. Vortex taps out, and well, the Abbasid Dynasty are beating the Mongols at their own game. I have to say that military wing upgrade, boot camp, composite bows, absolutely bonkers.